architects of freedom, great men from George Washington, Ben Franklin, and John Hancock, to many of the dynamic leaders of today, have one important thing in common. A fraternity that began as a simple group of stonecutters in ancient times and grew to become one of the most influential organizations in the history of man, the Brotherhood of Freemasonry. This is the Southern Jurisdiction National Scottish Rite Center in Washington, D.C., a monument to the Brotherhood of Man. It's a magnificent building, constructed of the finest stone and marble, a tribute to the architects who designed and built it. As each stone was carefully fitted to the next, and as the structure and others like it grew, so were constructed the ideals and aspirations of the members of the unique and dedicated group who call this home, the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, part of the great Masonic fraternity. During the next few minutes, let's take a journey that will answer questions that have been posed for literally hundreds of years. Special place building people, these ideals have been in modern America. While the Masons are very much up to date, their roots and principles go back many, many years to another time and another place. This is the story of that journey and where that journey has led our nation. The origins of Freemasonry are hidden in the mists of time. There are many stories that have emerged over the years, but few stand up to close scrutiny. One theory seems to have more credence than the others, and most historians believe it to be the most logical. The men who built the cathedrals and castles of Europe and Britain in the Middle Ages and early Renaissance were a close-knit group of stonecutters, masons, and master builders. They established a code of work and professional building standards. They brought apprentices into the craft, taught them not only the secrets of geometry and building, but also modes of recognition known only within the These served the same purpose as current day union cards. This helped them to assure that were maintained and also that traveling masons could receive aid and assistance when they needed it. They met, lived, and during the winter worked structures built against sides of cathedrals, structures called lodges. In the late 1500s in Scotland and perhaps England, the stonemasons began granting honorary members who did not work in stone, but were important tradesmen and community leaders. Over the course of years, the organization evolved into a fraternity known today as the Freemasons. Eventually, the non-tradesmen, the honorary Masons, became majority, and mutual support, philosophy, fellowship, and took precedence over stone cutting. Then on June 24, 1717, four lodges in London organized the Masonic fraternity in its present form. Very early on, the Masons established a tradition of service to family, community, and country that has grown short as the years have passed. As Masons from Scotland, England, and other countries came to the colonies in America, they brought Freemasonry with them. One of the first meetings on record was held on June 24, 1731, when St. John's Lodge in Philadelphia met at the tavern. Very quickly thereafter, lodges sprang up throughout the colonies and established themselves as an accepted and important part of community life. In the formative days of the Knights, before we even became a nation, the Freemasons played a role that was in it. Many of the early public officials were Masons, and there was hardly a town, village, or even settlement that did not see civic-minded Freemasons in prominent roles. Meanwhile, the Masonic family was growing. Around 1761, a higher degree, which later became Scottish Rite, arrived from France. The Scottite added advanced teachings in philosophy, ethics, and morality, Masonic values of brotherhood and charity. Its first members were men of diverse faiths who worked for intellectual freedom. Realizing the importance of Masonry to the community good, a group of Americans established a lodge in Boston in 1776. They received official charter from England, thus established Prince Hall Masonry, which continues to thrive as one of the great institutions. But of course, 1776 is better known as a pivotal year in America for a shaking reason, the Declaration of Independence. George Washington, a leader central to America becoming a nation, was a Freemason, served both this nation and his lodge throughout his life. Franklin was a Freemason, as were Nathan Hale and Dr. Joseph Warren, 
who was killed at the Battle of Bunker Hill. Richard Montgomery, Paul Revere, Mark Lafayette, Baron von Steuben, John Paul Jones, and literally hundreds of other fathers and supporters of the emerging United States. Less than 13 of the signers of the Declaration of Independence were Freemasons. The American Revolution would be inconceivable in many ways without the influence of Masonic lodges. You find at the time of the American Revolution a Masonic solidarity among the author corps that was uh, significant because there were no military academies that trained these, and they had no other form of camaraderie. Very Masonic lodges provided something that was otherwise lacking. After the Revolution, Masonic idealism, not being elitist, but in fact, uh, organization that would equality among men became very important as engine driving 19th century democratic culture, individualism, and later 19th century uh, romantic sentimentality. Lodges were built all over the United States. In many cases, the lodges were among the first structurally best, and new communities of masons, expertise to new frontiers. They were bankers, lawyers, farmers, shopkeepers, school teachers, and ministers all of the many trades and occupations necessary to build new towns and establish new territories. Great men like Lewis and Clark, who explored American West, Albert Pike, who celebrated the values of Native American culture, and Sam Houston, who founded the Republic of Texas, all were Freemasons. During the 1800s, the family of Mason began, as Masonic orders developed to include both men and women. The Order of the Eastern Star is largest of these orders, making women partners in the work of the fraternity. Organizations for young people developed later, making Freemasonry truly a family affair. The early stone cutters built by placing stone ponds. Today, the fraternity of Freemasons builds in the same way. But these stones, just as strong, are symbolic. With them, Masonry is accomplishing today what it seeks to accomplish tomorrow and its importance to modern America. It's impossible to travel to any town in the United States without seeing the Masonic symbol on buildings of all types. The great dedication to country and community, Freemasons have served as leaders in business, in education, in the arts, and in the arts, in literally every walk of American life. 20th century presidents, including Theodore Roosevelt, William Howard Roosevelt, Harry Truman, and Gerald Ford were Freemasons. Many justices of the Supreme Court, like John Marshall Douglas, Earl Warren, Finn Marshall and Hugo Black were made for Generals Pershing, MacArthur, Bradley, thousands of other prominent Americans. The impressive continues with businessmen like Robert Sarnoff and representatives of the arts like Irving Berlin, Duke Ellington, and magician Harry Houdini. Adventures in books like Charles Lindbergh were Masons, along with the American Trust Aldrin, carried this miniature banner of the Supreme Scottish Rite of Freemasonry on the first lunar landing. The list is huge, and it would take days to a membership that knows no barriers of race, religion, national origin, or social position. Those dedicated citizens didn't just talk about society's problems, they did something about them. And still do today. Our Masonic brothers donate over $2 million a to a wide variety of worthy causes. Masons also tirelessly in the communities of the world to further peace and cooperation, religious freedom and toleration and human rights. Some people call the Masonic order a hardly true. Masons make no secret of membership. They wear rings, lapel insignia, tie tacks, and other outward expressions of membership that are anything but secret. Family and friends are aware of and support membership in the fraternities and other. Are there special handshakes and passwords known only to the Masons? Definitely. Just like many other examples of proof of membership, these special signs from member to member make sure that imposters don't pass themselves off as Masons to defraud or use the name of the organization for unsuited purposes. How does organization of men attain this position of influence, concern, and love of country? We'll examine the role in society and how it brings so much to all of our lives. During our journey, we've formed the foundation of our symbolic structure, a tradition of community people's Masons have really affected the growth and success of our country. Certainly what's evident today emerges from the space, lovingly and skillfully left. The fountain stone also symbolizes the strong as Freeman moves ever more strongly into the future, fueled by the lessons and experiences of the past. Another vital element of Freemasonry is faith, being faith in ourselves and families, faith in our communities, our country.
Some people have confused masonry with religion. Meetings, just as they are for many organizations, are opened with a prayer. There are certain ritual forms that are followed, and there's an altar or table upon which rests a volume of scripture. A person who wants to become a mason must God. There are no it's in Freemasonry. But Freemasonry is not a religion. It's a fraternity. It's open to people of all faiths. It encourages each mason to be active in the religion of his choice. And each mason knows that without belief in a supreme being, each person is lost. Then you might ask, why, if not a religion, is so much ritual? The answer is simple. Ritual is an effective way to teach important ideas. It's based on centuries-old symbols of concepts of brotherhood and serves the same as does the ritual that surrounds our government as it conducts business Congress. The of iniquity is the family, and the same is true within the structure of masonry. A man who advances through the Masonic degrees or levels of membership is taught the great lesson, including how to love and be loved. An individual who is trustworthy and understands importance and integrity nourishes his family with the kind of principles that gives a sense of security and finds family responsibilities. This builds a strong family. Each strong family provides mortar that a country must have to survive and prosper. What I find about masonry makes my husband uh, a better man and a better husband is uh, it encourages him to strive to be a better person, uh, strive to be a better father, a better husband, to reach inside himself and the, the honor, the responsibility that being a father um, are supposed to be. We live in a world that is complicated for family in every respect. It's more complicated for children these days. I think marriages are harder to sustain. There are a lot of competing pressures. And memory provides for family values of commitment, of service, uh, of shared uh, efforts. All of those things are part of the sonic story. Along with the strength of a loving family, since have discovered a unique kind of brotherhood is comforting and invigorating to share ideas and social time with people that you know and trust. Within the Brotherhood of Masons, there's always someone with whom to share problems and successes, to plan new ways to help the community, and to reinforce the virtues and directions by which we live. Masonry lets each member associate with like-minded men of honor and integrity, and who believe that honesty, compassion, trust, and education are important factors in one's life. Masonry reinforces my worldview basically because I believe that all others and the fundamental basis of Freemasonry is fraternity. All men meet on a common level, irrespective of creed or national origin. As far as our faith is concerned, it gives us an opportunity to meet men of all faiths and work on a fraternal basis with them. What Freemasonry does is that it serves as a conduit for a lot of positive social values. Um, things like tolerance, patriotism, faith, hope. These things serve and reinforce character of our members. Becoming a member of the fraternity at any time of your life is something that will prove to be rewarding if you're looking for an organization that uh, supports uh, high integrity and uh, moral character. Most Masons find that within the Brotherhood of Freemasonry, they have room to progress through self-development and by the example set by those who have gone before them. The principle of charity forms a capstone in the structure of humanity. Likewise, the principle of charity forms the capstone of structure. Since the early days of Freemasonry in America, there's been an emphasis on public compassion. People are surprised when they learn how much is done with a dedication that defies action. To enumerate the philanthropic efforts of the Masons would require a great deal more time than we have here. But here's a list of just a few of noble efforts. Childhood language and disorders clinics and programs. Hospital children and burn institutes, computers for schools, Tennessee and Alabama shoe programs, Knights Templar Eye Foundation, Service Association Hospital Visitation Program, Disaster Relief, Special Olympian Soapbox, Gibbet Box, All Port, Autory Research, Deleuze Bikes for Kids programs, All Cedars Anon, Dentistry for Handicapped Children, Missouri Mason's Balls of Food, Detroit Knights Templar Support Youth, Masonic Foundation for Medical Research and Human Welfare. Camp Chakota, 
The philanthropic endeavors of the Scottish Rite Center has been to establish speech language centers across country. And it was a very unique opportunity for individuals who can't afford to pay for services. Uh, children with speech language problems are those kids who are at risk academic failure, they're at risk for learning disabilities, they're at risk for societal problems. And intervening with these kids early truly fits into the mission of Scottish Rite. And as a result, we'll be able to provide services for children for for services. And that forged them the opportunity to be successful citizens later on. And what do the leaders of today's society say about Freemasonry? What makes Trinity usual and special in American life is that it fills a very important gap in the lives of many Americans. It bonds people who are always alone, but it bonds them around significant ideals, ideals of service, ideals of charity, ideals of patriotism, and it does uh, uniquely and positively in a way that uh, enriches their lives and ultimately also enriches the country. Freemasonry go in the difficult to say because Masons adapt to times and conditions. But there are some things we can be sure of. Wherever a child cries in hunger, wherever a person strives for freedom and dignity, and wherever there's a human need, there close by will be a helping hand. Integrity, brotherhood, and compassion are needed. Close by will be a Freemason. There's a constant battle at the boundaries of freedom, eternally fought between those who would destroy freedom's way and those who are willing to pay the heavy price of preserving it. They faced persecution countries around the world because they dare to teach toleration and unity. Fortunately, here in the United States, Freemasonry has found the political and social to prosper. Here, Freemasonry is fully free. Community service, love of country, and a willingness to serve are the hallmarks of Masons all over America. And so, like these building blocks that formed our symbolic structure, the Freemasonry helped form the structures of our country and democratic life. Independent of the other, these blocks link together from a whole from each other until the whole bigger than the individual parts. It's through these united principles that America title the, the free principles of Scottish Rite Freemasons have architect freedom.